Hey, Paul. Hey, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. A little tired, jet lag, but we're good. Uh, we are here. This is a new thing for Roland. Uh, Roland FD, RFDL. RFDL, Roland Future Design Lab. Yeah, we started, it started in July. And Roland Future Design Lab is a group that kind of runs complementary to product R&D. And we're focused on horizon scanning and out past the typical window that product R&D looks at. Uh, emerging trends, uh, disruptive tech, uh, culture shifts. That's oh, the area think, that we're interested in. Think tank, in. kind of like it's kind of a think tank. Yeah, we don't. Uh, our goal is not to build finished products or services. Our goal is to test theories, uh, develop proofs of concept, get feedback from the market, uh, and if it's something that looks to be interesting, then we'll develop it out, uh, develop a proposal, and then bring it across to product R and D to bring it to life. Wow, that sounds like a great job. <laughs> it is. I, I have to tell you, I've been 32 years with Roland, and I feel like I've, I've finally struck it rich here. So yeah. So you get to kind of come up with all kinds of just great ideas and think about them, and th and then obviously the hard part is getting them to a demonstrable, you know, position. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. We've we've basically got three phases, if you will, to our work. The first is we're we've just we're just always watching. We're always listening. We've got antenna pointed in every direction, just trying to understand if there's something interesting that we should be paying attention to. If something catches our attention, then we move it to a research phase. And if something kind of withstands the rigor of some research and, and it seems to be there's something interesting for us, then we'll bring it into a proof of concept and we'll build something out. And that's what we're going to show you today is our first proof of concept. And the proof of concept is designed to really stress test uh, a concept get feedback from real world music creators uh, and if it looks interesting then as i say we package it up and bring it to the r d so if you just give me a quick outline of what we're going to have a look at and then we'll go over to casa yeah. so so uh, tell, yeah tell me th this this looks quite interesting so of course artificial intelligence is an area that we're interested in and we've been studying like many others as well uh, Earlier this year, we partnered with Universal Music Group to establish what we call the Principles for Music Creation with AI. Right, yeah. Uh, and it started as a, uh, kind of our own internal guidelines, but actually not unlike MIDI, as we kind of got into it, we started to recognize that actually the industry could benefit from an expression of these principles. And so we ended up, through a turn of circumstance, we ended up partnering with UMG. Uh, and uh, we introduced them, but we made them open and we invited companies to join them. Uh, join us rather. Uh, my secret goal, uh, is not secret now, was to get 50 companies within a year. Uh, we're approaching 100 and we've been six months. Uh, and now those companies range from academic institutions, universities all around the world, uh, trade associations, NAM, uh, the MIDI Association, manufacturers, software developers, all kinds. So, I mean, so the idea is essentially kind of not to use AI to obsolete creative humans, I think is exactly. kind of the thrust I mean, of it more or less. Yeah, the, 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 the phrase that's emerged is aligned AI, and aligned AI is making sure that AI protects and respects human in the loop, whatever that realm is. In our case, it's, it's musical expression. And so we want to make sure that AI is a complement to human creativity and doesn't displace human creativity. That's essentially what the principles are about. And that's what our proof of concept is about. Uh, Tone Explorer is our first AI experiment. Um, Sasamori san will go into more depth about this shortly. But we looked at various different problems to solve in music creation. And we, want, and we thought, you know, where could AI help? And one of those problems to solve is trying to find the best sound to match our musical performance. And many people struggle with that. And so Sasamori san led a project that considered how we would apply AI, AI to solve that problem. Right, so we're going to have a look at that now. Hey Sasamori san Hi. so uh, you're one of the developers of this new idea. Ah, uh, yes. And this is called, what's it called again? It's called Tone... Tone Explorer. Tone Explorer. Yeah. So, so just tell me, what does it do? Show me how it works. Okay, so uh, it requires the phrasing. So now I just uh, uh, recording to the simple phrase. So what we're doing here, you're going to load MIDI into the web. This is a web browser plugin. Yes. Using, uh, using um, I guess, uh, web MIDI, I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right, OK. OK, I want to try to the loading the MIDI. OK, so this is just going to be a MIDI clip or a MIDI file, but we could also yes. record MIDI if we wanted to. But OK, so that's a bass. Right, and that's playing. Uh, yeah, the playing. 
Ah, okay, so okay. now we've got a new graphic. So here is the one top categories, and then here is also five categories, it's the top five categories. And then each category has a 10 tones, and then it's aligned by the score. Okay, it goes through the export, the base category. You can find uh, uh, any variation of the tones. All oh, right, so it gives, so that, that there, it gives it a kind of Yes, score. a fit score, so a score that it thinks is the most appropriate sound for that riff, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if you wanted, uh, uh, oh, that's a good. So then, please memorize by the clip under here. Yeah. So, okay, that a uh, uh, clip, and then it goes through the uh, other categories. Oh, that's good. Goes with the memorizing. Right. So it's like a kind of patch browser, but it's pre-filtered based on the musical and what's it looking at is it looking at patch parameters or is it looking at the actual sound of the uh, yeah so uh, it doesn't it, to make the data it takes an analysis of the audio yes, yes uh, so it, uh, uh, basically the we uh, understanding the uh, semantic of the phrases and then reflect it to the uh, acoustic parameter of the each tones. Right, so it's it's not the patch parameters, it's the yeah. actual sound. Actual sound, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, gosh. So, and then go through the, uh, the top categories, and then uh, if you want it more deeply, and then go through the uh, consideration view, it's a horrible sound here. So you can... Oh, right, so you've got more of a sort of universe look. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, and then you can go the dipping by the, this slider. And this is uh, this is going through Zencor uh, patches, is it? Yes, right. And wh what's playing? Are they playing in the browser, or where's the where's the sound coming from? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so this is a browser, but uh, it, uh, it is uh, connected with uh, Xenology right. on Galaxias. Right. Okay. So that's that's just a Roland plugin. That's sure. and that the MIDI is being communicated from the application from the Chrome application internally to the door yeah. to play the sounds. Right. Sure. Okay. Okay. So again, so in the, uh, you can check the uh, any history of the digging the song. And if you would uh, focus the memorize, but you can go back to the uh, right history okay. over here, and then. So finally, you can check the other, uh, sorry, <laughs> the kind of the clip the tones. Right. So up to the 10 tones clipped, so you can check the, uh, your favorite tone from the 3,500 tones. Right, and then, so then it, that's then in your plugin and your, so I mean, this is very much a proof of content. I understand the UI and everything is not final, it's, you know. Yeah. But the, so is the idea that this would work only in software or could it be embedded in hardware synths or, you know, or don't you know yet? <laughs> yeah, so now we uh, think about the future development is embedded in the software and the hardware too, but not uh, fixed. So, but uh, we are trying to do anything in the future. Right. Okay. And uh, so we provide this uh, uh, kind of uh, technology preview now. But I suppose once you've done the analysis of all of these Zencor patches, you've got all that metadata uh, that yeah. is also useful and, and can be used to kind of work in both ways. So you can use it to maybe apply metadata to patches as well. Interesting. Yeah. So the big model, <laughs> the big model is living in Roland Cloud or somewhere online. Sure. <laughs> okay. I it's amazing. So we we thought. <laughs> So this is, is this the first of your big projects or, you know, what, what's, you, have you got other things on the go? This is just the first one you can show. Yes, so this is the one, one the first step now. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.